today. Uh, so we're going live today and we are talking today about the kingdom of God and how to recognize the kingdom of God. And so we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. It says, uh, it's 1 Corinthians 4 and 20, the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So the kingdom of God is not in in the uh, in our in words, and we, we see that today there is an influx of a lot of preachers and a lot of. Oops. Okay, it looks like we're going live. Let's shut this off. Sorry, it's not working. All right. So today we are starting uh, in First Corinthians and uh, four and twenty, and it says in four and twenty, it says, "For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power." So we today see that there's an influx of preaching, but there's not a lot of demonstration of power. And I'm going to explain a little bit of this today because we have to understand what the difference is between the kingdom of God and the false kingdom or the counterfeit kingdom, because the kingdoms that we, that uh, Satan is building, he's building a religious kingdom and he emulates and he counterfeits God's kingdom. And he puts forth men that seems to be, or women that seem to be very intellectual, very wise in word, but they have no demonstration of power. And they and they claim that they have the power of God. They they constantly talk and they they uh, they uh, lift themselves up in this uh, in this status of being a great one in power, not only in words but in power. And or and they feel and they believe that the spirit of God worketh in them. Because the wisdom they they have or the knowledge they have or the insights they have, they feel like it comes from the spirit of God. And I'm going to show you today the difference between working and manifesting Christ in the power of the kingdom of God and what it looks like to work within a false prophet. And, and I'm going to use Balaam as an example because Balaam... Uh, he, uh, he was in, known as a prophet, but he became a prophet of hire or he became a false prophet. And the Bible says he became that he was a soothsayer. So he was working and operating in another spirit and he was operating in, in some manifestations that we see that the spirit um, you know, says that believers can have believers can walk in in the spirit of prophecy. They can they can speak prophetic words. They uh, uh, they can work in words of knowledge. They can work in the tongues, but you have, but it's limited power because when you look at the nine get, uh, gifts of the spirit. As we move towards the nine gifts to the the, the Bible says that the that these uh, the spirit that that we get initially we get initially endowed with power we get the tongues and that is the initial gift but the, but the Bible says it's the least gift but it's a necessary gift you start there you, everyone must begin at the at when they're baptized being infilled with the spirit and the tongues is that initial evidence that you have the spirit of God, that God wakened your spirit, your spirit became alive. You, you believed and you received the gift, but it's limited. It's limited. It is not in, it's not in full uh, effect. It's not, it's not grown in maturity. Your spirit has just be, been resurrected. Your spirit's been made alive. And now you have a spirit 
the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of Christ in you. This is salvation. We all must come humble ourselves and we acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. And we come into this uh, new birth, right? This new birth. And so we are, our spirit is made alive. And we are now we are working and operating in uh, in the kingdom of God. But it's, it's, it's limited because there's some things within our carnal mind and our carnal uh, soul that prevents God. And these things must be dealt with before the manifestation of God's power can actually, uh, you know, you know, transform our lives around us, transform the situation because God wants to move. He wants to move. He wants to move within individuals. He wants, he wants to be an, an habitation uh, of your, in your vessel. But, it, but it starts with a, a a portion. You get a the Bible says you get a, a portion of the spirit. The, you know, the Bible says that Jesus was full of the spirit without measure. And then you see the apostles, they were full of the Holy Ghost and they had wisdom and knowledge. And God made them extraordinary, but they were full. They had reached maturity. Uh, but we are limited because we never come to full stature in Messiah, in Christ, where the old has passed away, where all things are, are, are put to death, old things are put to death, and now we're made alive. We're, we're still going through the process, but we get sidetracked because we think if we're speaking in tongues or moved in a prophetic word or in a a tongues interpretation, or if we have some premonition or some discernment, then we are, we have the full benefits of the spirit. And those are just the initials. And I'm going to show you that because this is where we get off track because this is exactly what Balaam he worked in the prophetic. He worked within the uh, speaking. See, when you get saved, the Bible says, "Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water." So the 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 so the the, the whole the spirit of the unseen connects with your spirit, and now you can move by your word. So it's not necessarily means that you're full of the Holy Spirit, right? You're not full. You're not a habitation. You're just being able to be uh, used either by the spirit of God or spirit ever, because your spirit is now awakened, right? You're, you are now awakened to the spirit realm. When you were in sin, you were not conscious. You're not, we're not conscientious about the spirit realm unless you dabble in the dark arts. Now, if you dabble in the dark arts, you understand about spiritual things and tapping into that, that spirit realm, but you're doing it illegally. But uh, for us to walk legally in the spirit, we uh, we have to we have to go through the process. We have to we have to come up, and we have to uh, we have to go come up higher. We have to we have to we have to be in close proximity to our Master Yeshua to reign and 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 reign with Him and be co heirs with Him. We must be in close proximity to him when his spirit is manifested in our mortal bodies and he is able to touch those around us we must be yielded to that and it and we must be made clean and i'm i'm going to talk about that today because there's hindrances and we don't deal with the hindrances that prevent us and and more you move close to to the to your master to the lord to jesus in in that proximity of his power being manifested in you then the the, the attacks of the enemy become very prevalent they become there they are definitely there to stop or and destroy the works that god is trying to do in you but we settle but i'm going to start with what i started in jude because 
into you because this word, the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power is very significant. This is a change. This is a game changer to a believer, someone who's walking in the, in the fullness of God, then the fullness of the spirit, because you must demonstrate the power. Like I said, the demonstration of the power is elevation and there will be so, uh, power of signs and wonders. There will be gifts of healing and there will be gifts of miracles. And these are not done by words. You speak the word in authority and power, but they are demonstrated. There is a there is a power that comes forth because you are in close proximity to the master and the master is able to come through you, Jesus, and through the Holy Spirit to manifest in 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 this natural realm. But if there's boundaries, there's barriers, sin barriers sin barriers that stop because the Holy Spirit will not cross over sin barriers. If your body, mind, soul are carnal and still on the physical, then you will have sin barriers. Those have to be uh, dislodged. They have to be removed. And those things that, that, uh, that the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and all these things must be dealt with because the Holy Spirit is not going to move in your soul when there's when you're been lifted up in pride and when you're been and you're motivated by worldly lusts. Do you see that? So you there's things that must take place. See in the kingdom of darkness, you you how uh, how depraved you get or how demoralized you become, you become you become full of power. Do you see you become, you have power when you, when you have come to the lowest degree. This is why uh, witches and warlocks and people who work in the dark arts, they will kill, they will murder, they will, they will sacrifice, blood sacrifice. They will, uh, they will be uh, immoral to, in their conduct. They will be profane in any way they possibly can. They will do the opposite and go into the lowest uh, depravity so that they will elevate here and they will gain power, popularity. They will, and they will have, uh, they will have the sorcery, um, uh, 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 ability to be able to captivate the minds of the people. Yes. You, they will, they will, they will put you under a spell and they will captivate your mind. They can be, they can be so immoral. They can be so disgusting. You will, you can know these things about these people and still have an affection towards them, still have a desire to be want to be with them, to be around them. You have a, you have a, 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 a longing and a, an, an inordinate affection towards them. Even, even when you know that they are wicked, even when you know that they do evil, even though when you know that they are in sin, this is why preachers, that are in sin that fall in many ways and, you know, in, you know, in adultery and, and all kinds of perversions still have a huge masses of people, huge followings because they are, they have captivated the people. Do you see what they are spellbound? They are mind, their minds are bond, their affections are tangled up with these sorcerers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens. And until you recognize that you are bound to a person that is in, in satanic power and until you are able to be free, this is why the Holy Spirit comes into a believer and you must be praying in the spirit. The Bible says in uh, I believe in Jude, it says that we are building up our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. So the first thing of initiation in God's kingdom is giving you the, the power to speak in the realm of the spirit, to be able to dislodge, break the, those barriers, break those bondages, break those and sever those soul ties 
and to get us dislodged. Do you see? Mm -hmm. We have to pray. There is, you can speak the word all you want. You pray against these things all you want, but it's never going to actually take its effect until this, until you are praying in the spirit, till the spirit, till the anointing is the anointing that breaks the yoke, right? Yes. It's the anointing and that anointing must flow through you. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit has made you a habitation. It just means that he is connected with your spirit and now he's using your mouth. Do you see? To break, start to break in the chains of enslavement and the chains of sin and darkness, things that we've gotten entangled with, those things that are coming against us, those things, those outside forces, those witchcrafts, uh, uh, powers that are engaged against us. Do you see that is captivated us? That keeps us bound to the world, keeps us bound to people, keeps us in a, a state of servitude to, to our physical realm and right. to people. Do you see? We have yeah. to break free from these things, but we want to have to, we have to want to break free. We have to recognize them and get, and we have to have the spirit engaging with our spirit, right? And speaking these things, not only in words that we understand, but also words that we don't understand, words that we that our minds are not fruitful. So because the spirit knoweth what's in man and he knoweth what what the spirit realm is like, he knows more than what we understand. So we must give yield to that. So he uses our mouth. Right. right. Does it mean that you have escape carnality right you haven't escaped the carnal mind you have not escaped the carnal emotions and and you still have bondages in areas of your soul right but you still have a but you have the spirit working with you so through our journey in life we are we are coming to full stature we're raising up we are being empowered by god Right. As we become detached to the world, Satan and his kingdom. Right. Yes. And then when we are clean and I'm going to show that because there are barriers that prevent the Holy Spirit to pass through us. He cannot pass through. This is why the kingdom of God suffer violence, suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. You've got to force your way into the spirit realm. You got to force, you got to, you got to, you got to fast. You got to pray. You got to force yourself into getting free, liberated so that the power of God can actually move through you, right? Because it takes holiness. It takes humility and holiness to be able to see this manifestation of being a tabernacle and habitation for God's presence, right? Yeah. And to actually experience the power of God. Right. The actual, this is why people are not getting healed. This is why people are not getting completely delivered. This is why the the words of, of preachers, uh, people of intelligence that seem to entice the people are rising to the uh, to the top because people are you are 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 enticed by the the wisdom or the knowledge or the eloquence of words right and god uses words but that but the but paul says i didn't come with the the uh, the wisdom of the world or the wisdom of of words but I've came in demonstration of power. It's the, it, he didn't come with enticing words of wisdom. The enticing words to bind you, to enslave you, to make him feel like you you are that uh, that uh, somehow he was more superior. Right? No, he came in compassion and he came with the demonstration of power because it was more beneficial to his followers and to the people that he was surrounded to break the strongholds and to and to work in the power of God and to, instead of trying to to uh, uh, entice them with elegance of words, right? right? This is why the kingdom of God is not with words. Not to say that the word of God is not power. We've got to have the word of God in us. We've got to have the word of God because it takes the word of God to fight against the the uh, the uh, the attacks of the enemy, right? We must speak the word of God, and but we must have that anointing with the word that breaks the yoke. 
but we might, but our weapons, we, we, we work in the, uh, the offense when we have the, the word of God in our mouth, right? right? When we have it in our heart, when we meditate it on day and night. So we do not sin against God that we have that word when, a, when the enemy comes and and tries to bring lies that we have the word of truth to be able to combat it and and thwart it and stop it. So the it's not about the word of God. The word of God itself is breathed. It's inspired, right? Yeah. It's the inspired word of God. So that you can take the plain sense of the word of God and be able to use it as a sword, okay? A weapon against the darkness they have to bow to the word right because their their spirit brings their pneumas their breasts so physical combat or physical things are not going to remove uh, it's not going to you know it's not going to move them it's the authority and power do you see of the word of god demonstrated in a vessel right that is full of the anointing See, the, the vessel has to be anointed. The vessel has to be energized. Do you see? Has to be, has to be, have this life that manifests itself in them. Do you see? You've got to be a, a, a conduit, a mediator of this power. Mm-hmm. You can't just have word because then it becomes dead letter, right? Yeah. It has to become alive. The only way that the word becomes live and not dead in a vessel is when the anointing, when the spirit of God breathes upon it and makes it alive. But he uses living vessels that to breathe upon, to speak. And this is why you can see some minister can speak the word. The word itself has authority. The word itself has power. But you you connect that with a man of God that has that, that has been anointed by God and has and has has died to the to the flesh and to the world and to the enemy's uh, tactics. And you see him full of the Holy Spirit. And then that word is going to come in great power, and it's going to change our our circumstance. Do you see? It's going to speak life to the situation is going to resurrect that which is dead right it's going to bring power it's going to bring healing it's going to it's going what it's going to do is going to cause the cripple to walk again it's going to ca- cause the blind eyes to see again it's going to cause the ears to be open to hear do you see what i mean it's going it, you're going to see it in reality we're not going to have to pretend we're not going to have to wonder why we're going to see it manifest itself. Because like I've spoken before, the Satan has only limited power and he only works in the flesh and he works in, in, in the signs of what we see today. Words, right? Right. Lying words. And he uses technology and he uses the forces around us to demonstrate some kind of uh, of miracles you know uh i've i've heard before like in africa they'll go to those witch doctors right and they'll pay these witch doctors to heal them they have this ailment and they want to be healed so he makes up a potion and he gives it to him speaks over over them and puts a curse on them that's what they do but they but they be they're healed in one area but in the other areas, they're they're starting to feel the suffering in other areas. Do you see what I mean? So you never become completely healed. You're constantly have to go back to the witch doctor. You constantly have to go back to the witch. You constantly have to go back to the kingdom of darkness because he, he they can't totally heal you. They can't make you well. They can't completely restore you. Do you see what I mean? It's a lie. It's just enough to entice you and it's enough to keep you coming back. And more you go back to the witch, the more you're going to get uh, cursed, right? You're going to be, it is those demons that are working in them that's doing the supernatural power, right? Yeah. That making you believe just like uh, like uh, pharmacia, like phar- uh, the medicines that they, and the potions that they make, you know, they give you just enough 
to relieve you of your symptoms, right? If you have a headache, you can take an aspirin or you can take a uh, Tylenol or, or a leave or something. And it, it doesn't heal you. It just alleviates the pain. It masks the mind. It deceives the brain to think that you are that you don't have this problem anymore, but the problems remains, right? This is why they, uh, uh, the medical profession can never cure a person. They can only make you comfortable. They can, it's a deception. This is why it's sorcery. It, it can never completely make you whole. People who are in remission of cancer seem to always go back into uh, into cancer, you know, the, the, the disease comes back every, everything they try to cure, they try, it, it, it comes back and it comes back heavy because the curses were not removed and they, and they can't, they can only medicate. They can only deceive the mind. They can only, uh, mask the body just so that you don't seek after your, the, the great physician, right? Right. They do, you know, and this is why we keep running back from doctors to doctor. And what that happens? You have other symptoms that follow. You all, you know, there's always side effects to all these medicines, right? There's always a side effect, and so you're if, if you get you maybe alleviate one problem, but you gain an, uh, like ten other problems, right? That's how the enemy works. You're never whole. You're never completed. You're never made well. And so, but, but Satan has done a very good job to eliminate, hasn't he not? Had to eliminate the power of God and cause people to deceive. So you feel like when you listen to some of these ministers or these preachers, you feel like you're get you're coming away with some kind of knowledge. You're coming away with something, right? But it's not beneficial. It's, it's the words of vanity. That's all it is because it can't create power. It can't create, it can't cause you to become whole. It can't create a, a, a new circumstance for you. It cannot make you free. Right. It doesn't change anything. You're still in the same boat, in the same situation. You've not recovered. You, you gain knowledge, but you're still a slave. You're still bound to sin. You're still, you're just feeling like you've got, you know, somewhere, but it's not, but it's not beneficial. You, there's, no, you're waiting. We're constantly waiting. Are we not yes. waiting for God to move? We're waiting for our deliverance. We're waiting for God to make, uh, to perform. We're waiting. We're waiting for God to elevate. We're, we're in promotion. We're waiting for that, 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 you know, open door, right? And it never comes open because we tie ourselves to men and women that do not give you the remedy. They do not give you the source and they do not tell you what the problems are to be made whole. They just keep uh, they just keep enticing the mind. Right. Mm -hmm. They just keep enticing the mind. You feel like your mind is becoming, your carnal mind is becoming enlarged as you as you uh, deteriorate mm -hmm. and go into uh, into the realm of sin and death and never become free. Right? Yeah. So in Jude, we're going to start there because because uh, like I spoke last time, and I want to start with this. Uh, well, we'll just start with uh, three. Beloved, verse three. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of uh, the common salvation, it was needful. Salvation is deliverance. Salvation is wholeness and completeness. Salvation is moving into your purpose and your destiny. Yes. And that's what salvation, salvation, and but see, we're halted. We're halted because of these, these, uh, uh, false prophets and Balaam was a stumbling block to Israel, a stumbling block. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And these are what these men are. They're, they're stumbling block to your uh, wholeness, to your completeness, to what God has, has purpose for us through the gospel, through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. This is, you know, they're stumbling blocks. As because we're we're wanting to look on the natural, we want to look on the physical, and we want when we and through covetousness, 
we want fame. We want, you know, popularity. We want affirmation. We want, we want attention. We want wealth. Do you see that is what enticing these people? These people look successful, worldly successful. And so that is what are really what is in our heart. Right. Because you are wanting to attach to something that looks successful. And that's exactly what Satan uses is that he will give them this pseudo money, the pseudo popularity, the pseudo uh, advancement in the world. Right. And even satanic knowledge. Right. right. So you're eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So that you you are bound to the covetousness of it, what you see, what you desire, and your desire is to to be, uh, you know, to be uh, recognized in the world. And that's where that's where the problem is. Yes, it is. But it says, but they don't want to be whole. They don't want to be free. They you know they want to, they just want money. They want to live what. The good life, I guess, you yes. know, the life, yes, the, good life. the good life. So it was needful, it says, uh, diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. So the, the you know, the faith and the gospel and the word of truth is scarce. Right. It's scarce. It's hidden. There's always been a secret church. There's always been an underground church. There's always been a, them that are hidden. Yeah. That the 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 gospel is not it's not it's not on display. The true gospel, right? And we see this in scripture. I mean, I be, I believe if you're get if if the word of God is easy and it's cheap, then you are in a harlot system. And I'm talking about the Babylonian church system. And I'm talking about the messianic movement. I'm talking about religion. If it's coming easy, if you're not searching, the Bible says you must search diligently with all your heart and you shall seek with all your heart and you shall find me. There is, there is, if the righteous are scarcely saved, what is going to happen to the ungodly? So the righteous is scarce. So there is only been an underground church that has ever existed in 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 life in, in all its existence. We could go through scripture because it says that uh, in the time of Baal, uh, uh, Elijah, that uh, seven hundred prophets, God's prophets, were hidden from the tyranny of Ahab and Jezebel. There is an uh, so, and you see in Hebrews that the uh, true men and women of God were hidden in caves so that they would not be persecuted, that their lives would not be taken out prematurely, that uh, people would uh, uh, that people that uh, that uh, uh, like unto Jezebel that has this Jezebel spirit that kills the prophets. It does not, and we have a Jezebel system, a harlot system that we're contending with, will do all that they can to stop the gospel, to stop your your advancement, to stop the, the progression of the kingdom of God working in, in human vessels. They'll use every witchcraft, sorcerer, they'll, they'll conjure up so many alliances with witches and they will they will use technology i mean i believe that you know technology and the and the internet they have power yes. they're like god when they when they're behind a computer and they're able to manipulate and control the outsource of of the gospel or the outsource of what they want out in the public's view yes when they can censor the gospel, when they can censor the the true men and women of God, because they use technology to stop them. Do you see what I mean? So technology is an avenue that men and women use to to uh, to to manipulate and control to control 
what is being what is being put forth, right? right? And to cause, you know, cause great frustration, aggravation can cause and to stop any anyone who's moving in the power of God or the Holy Spirit, they will use and they try to build a platform, they try to minister, he, they will they will use the technology against them to make your life a living hell. Double H E L L. Uh, literally, right? Yes. Because the, the technology is frustrating when you're trying to do, to outsource something, right? When you're trying to get something out, when you're trying to do something, they they and it's and it's a way of control. It's a way of manipulation. It's a way of frustration. It's a way of to aggravate, to get you in the flesh, to to uh, to uh, to uh, you know to uh, what do you call it? Uh, you lose hope to, you know, way of despondency, you know, you lose, you know, you lose your will to want to prevail, you know, it just, you know, it just sucks the life out of you. Right. So this is what, this is what, this is why the Bible says we must contend to the face. See, we must, you know, we live in a day and age and we live in a uh, country that we're not men, uh, um, uh, men and women that are proclaimed the, and profess the name of Christ are not being killed, but in the spirit realm, we're being assassinated. Do you see? We're being we're being the thir- uh, courses are being shot at us at every turn. Do you see? There things are being controlled in the spirit, and we are being so ignorant as believers, thinking that everything is just happenstance. Oh, this is just the way life is. Oh, we're and we accept the status quo as this is just the way it is. No, there are spiritual forces that are working against you. You have contrary winds constantly at you to stop you, and you've got to war in the spirit. This is why you've been given the Holy Spirit tongues to fight against that because it takes anointing. So we must contend. We must not lose hope. We must not, we must prevail. We must endure. We don't, must not allow these things to frustrate us, but we must, we must contend, right? We must fight. We must wrestle. We must, we must persevere. We must pursue God's will at all costs, right? Mm-hmm. So this is what it says. Early, the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, the sanctified ones, the ones that have sanctified themselves unto holiness, the ones who have humbled themselves, one who set themselves apart. This is where the power is being demonstrated. This is where the power is, is delegated to, right? right? Sanctified saints, not sinners. You come out of sin and you sanctify yourself from sinners and you purge yourself from sin. You start destroying the works of sin in your life and the dominion of sin in your life. And then what well, you become a saint, but you, God still got to put you through testings because we lose hope. Some people cannot endure yes. the sufferings of Christ. Right. So they fall by the wayside. Mm hmm. Uh, so for there are certain men crept unaware who were before of or, old ordained to before uh, to ordain this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of God, making it easy, easy grace, right? Lascivious, making it uh, into covetousness, lasciviousness, enticing the desires, the lust of the flesh, right? If it's easy. And it and it and it and it's without fight. It's, if it's too easy and it's cheap, guess what? It's not the gospel. It's a harlot system, right? It's a whore that has enticed you in in the in the lust of your flesh, right? Thinking that you are sanctified, thinking that you are a saint when you're nothing but a sinner, right? That are given over to your flesh and and they captivate you through your lasciviousness or lust and i will therefore put you in you the remembrance through once knew this how that the lord having saved the people out of 
the land of Egypt, the world, after destroying them, believe not. They believe not. They could never, they could never come to the full knowledge of what God had desired for them because they stayed carnal, they stay, they stay sensual, they stay demonic, and they never came into this being a habitation, right? of God's presence or being able to rise up in, in the fullness of God. And the angels would kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, but hath reserved the everlasting change unto darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Okay, well, I spoke last time about the fire, the fiery serpent, and how that this city, the cities, the five cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were given over to perversion, but they were working and operating in the serpentine power. They were able to control the people. They took advantage of the people. They were able to take over the cities. Do you see what I mean? They were able to take over the uh, the uh, the minds of the people because there was a power given to them through their fornication, through their depravity, through their uh, uncleanness. Right? They uh, they uh, the Bible says that in uh, Genesis that they. Uh, they searched, they went, they were, they were, uh, they were searching anyone that came in the city. They, uh, they were searching for those people that were not yet defiled. They wanted to defile every person that walked in that city. If you were not defiled, then you were not one of them, right? So through fornication and perversion, sodomy, that's where we get sodomy from. And through the reverses, you know, you're coming to the uh, to the lowest degree of uh, depravity, to the lowest reprobate mind where you are you're doing the the uh, your the unnatural order of things. Right. Yeah. To bring about power. Right. To bring about power. So this fiery serpent, this is why the eternal power or the eternal visions or the eternal didn't see it was destroyed by sulfur or eternal uh, unquenchable fire like fire from hell right it never goes it never goes away it never goes out it took it probably took decades it took a long time they say today that you know they you know they have discovered so the old cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and it's all ash of sulfur ash and some of that is still burning today you can if you put it in in the right element it will uh, it will strike a fire right and so it is unquenchable it will not die it's eternal fire do you it may be ash but you take it to the to the core it is it still has potency to it right it still can burn you. It can still get you today, right? So this vengeance it says of eternal fire. This means it, this means fire that is because they have been given over to that uh, to the fallen angel worship, and they had received this uh, eternal power that comes from darkness, from the fiery serpent, and the only way to destroy it was by the eternal fire of God presence do you see he's all consuming fire and he what did he do he rained down uh, fire and brimstone right and yeah. turned the cities into ash and so and because of he had to destroy not only flesh but they he had to destroy that which was eternal their souls right their spirit their that three-part being so this is why I say that this way. And so anyways, I'll go to Isaiah 9 because in Isaiah 9, it kind of tells us that about that fire. It says in Isaiah 9 and 14, I believe it says. It says, it's, we'll go to the 13th verse. It says, oh. says, for the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore, the Lord will cut 
off from Israel, the head and the tail branch and rush in one day. And the ancient and the honorable, right? The ancient and the honorable, those who are promoted in the world that are given over to the satanic powers. Uh, he is he the heads and the prophets that teach us lie. He is the tail for the leaders of this people cause them to err and they that are led of them are destroyed. So all these people that are working in this false anointing and this serpentine power, sorcery, witchcraft, all these things will be God will destroy their error, right? For the leaders of this people cause them to err and the leaders, because they, they want to be, they want to be recognized in the world. They want to elevate in the world. And therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall they have mercy on their father, fatherless and widows. And for everyone is, is a hypocrite and an evildoer. Every mouth speaketh folly for all this has been anger. It's not turned away, but his hand is stretched out, out still for the wickedness burneth as a fire. See, God had to use, the fire of his presence uh -huh. to to extinguish the fire of the wicked yes do you see uh -huh. that's why it was eternal fire right. huh yeah. Yeah, that's why it was eternal this is it because it's it's the brightness of his coming this is why when Yeshua jesus comes back he's not coming back as was he came, went up he's not coming back as a man a man of flesh Right. Like a lot of people believe, they believe that he's coming back and yeah. as a man. Yeah. But the Bible says when he comes back, he he will destroy the enemy with the brightness of his coming and wow. with the word of his mouth. He is an unapproachable light, and the and he will consume all his enemies. See, you're, you, when Jesus comes back, he's coming as a warrior king and he's going to destroy with the eternal fire. He's going to destroy the wicked with the eternal fire of his presence. This is why the Bible says that they're going to hide in rocks, didn't he say? And they said, cover us from this presence. Right. Because our flesh it will not stand in the presence of that consuming fire. This is why the saints will be changed in a twinkling of an eye at the at the last trump at his appearing at his coming because flesh will not survive. Flesh will not survive the coming of the Lord. And the wicked and those who are not transformed, those who are not changed, those who have not been consumed by the fire of his presence and has and, and declothed the flesh, the body of death, will be destroyed. It will be ate up by that fire, right? Because they burn with the serpentine fire, the false light, right? Yeah. They burn. This is how they get power. This is how they get power over the masses. This is how they seduce men. This is how they throw a, a throw a fiery darts of the wicked one towards the saints of God or to people or to anyone. And it and it penetrates because it's a it's a fire, right? Fiery dart. Yeah. That is trying to uh, to create an inferno in your life to destroy you. Right. It, it, and this is why God says, I will destroy for the wicked burneth as the fire. It shall devour the briars and the thorns and they shall kindle in the thicket of the forest and they shall mount up like the lifting of a smoke through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened. This is why when he comes back, he's not going to destroy the earth with a flood, but he will destroy it with fire. Yes. Right? With fire, an unquenchable fire, an eternal fire. And no man, it says, the, oh, the wrath of the Lord of hosts to, uh, is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel. The people, the wickedness of the people, those who are working in the fire of Satan's presence, will be like fuel to God's fire, right? And no man shall spare his brother. And he shall snatch one to the right hand and be hungry and be and he, and he shall eat 
on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. Satisfied, they shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. And it says Manasseh and Ephraim and Ephraim and Manasseh and the together shall be against Judah for all this is the anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And that's why the Bible says that he makes his ministers flames of fire. And, and what he said that the weakest uh, like unto David will be like a fiery pot, right? in God's hands that, you know, we have to have this power. You're not going to get it being carnal. You're not going to get it when if you're living in the flesh, you've got to tap into God's eternal fire. The power of, this is why he baptizes us with the Holy ghost and fire, because it, we might get the, the initial Holy spirit, but it's we're, but we are building up to that fire. The, fire, the power must be in fire, right? Yes. And we're not out destroying anything in the world. Yeshua will do that. Jesus will do that. He will destroy all flesh. He will, but we, what we do, we are given power from on high to be able to snuff out Satan's plans, to cancel his plans, and to and dislodge ourselves and to create uh, in us the power of God that glorifies him to do, to demonstrate his glory in the earth. Right. That is what we are used for. This is why we want. So anyways, we're going back to uh, numbers 20, 22 and 12. Because, you know, we are a hidden, we are a hidden right now we're not we're not on display the church is not on display until they are moved in power until they uh till they are quit having a love affair with the world and they want to move in power when they want to put their affections on above and not on beneath and god can say okay then i'm ready to endow you with the power on high but until then, and we've got to remove those sin barriers. This, well, this is why in Psalms 24, let's just go there right quick. Psalms uh, 24, it says, The Lord, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwelleth therein. He found it. Let me see. It. Oh, yeah. For he has found it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend? Who can get up in close proximity to the Lord? Who can who can hold this power? Because those who, as you get closer to, to the presence of God, the flesh is burned up. Who can endure an all-consuming fire of God? You know, who can endure it? That's what the Bible says, right? Those fiery uh, in Malachi, you know, we, who can endure him? You know what I mean? We can't, uh, our flesh can't, we must, we must transfer into a spirit realm. We must be changed to a spirit man that only can endure the fire of his presence. Uh, but anyways, let's get him. He said, for he has found upon the seas and established upon the, on the flood, who shall ascend into the holy hills of God, the Mount Zion, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart and who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor swear deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from God of thy salvation. Hallelujah. This is the generation of him that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, who seek thee with all thine heart. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall in come into you. Do you see what I mean? He shall come into you. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up the heads, O ye gates, even lift up them up, ye everlasting doors, the, the door of your spirit, the door that connects you to that realm. The king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The king, uh, the Lord of hosts, Tashuvah. He is the king of glory. 
So anyways, who can stand in that holy place? The holy place is the soulish realm. Who can, the who, can, only, only Jesus Christ could stand in there when your soul is pure. See, the sin barriers, do you understand? If you have unclean hands or an impure heart and your soul is lifted up in vanity or in filth, and if you have a lying tongue, God, the Holy Spirit will not pass through these things. Do you see what I mean? He expects these things to be sanctified and purified. And what happens is that we get into secret sins. We hide we evil in our heart. We, we are offended. We have unforgiveness. We have resentment. Our word speaks deceitfully. Do we see to gain something in this life? We don't speak in truth. We, we fear man more than we fear God. So what do we do? We speak a lie to, for a, a, a instant satisfaction of temporal sustainability, right? Yeah. That's what we do. So what happens is the, these are preventing the move of God. See clean, clean house, though the clean house, those who have not, and that's more than just committing murder or having blood on your hands. I mean, the Bible says, you know, that they did not repent of the works of their hands. Mm -hmm. That means that they did not repent of their filthy deeds. That can be perversion. That can be sexual perversion, uh, masturbation. That can be uh, fornication. That could be, uh, you know, that can be in so many realms uh, given, uh, you know, swift to do evil, you know, you know, um, it could be thieving, anything. Uh, when a spirit takes hold of you, they can take <laughs> hold of your hand. And I uh, watched Derek Prince one time and he, he was, you know, praying deliverance for uh, for people who had uh, that were, you know, committing sexual sins and and uh, and masturbation and different things like that. And he said you had to rebuke and shake your hands to dislodge those spirits that had come and take residence in those members of your body. Right. And you had to dislodge them by shaking them off. That could be if you're using your hands for evil, you have to shake it off. This is why when uh, when uh, uh, when Paul he got he had to what did he do? He shook that serpent that was trying to get on his hands, right? Because he had committed murder, right? Did he not commit murder? And that spirit of murder, that curse, that generational curse, that curse that was that was in his life came back to roost, right? Came back. And when he was sitting there, it what did it do? It jumped out of the fire. It jumped out and it got on him and bit him. And the, all the people that were with him were thinking that he was going to die, right? But he shook it off. Because he shook off that spirit because he no longer was that old man. He was no longer that murderer. He was a transformed individual by the power of God. And he was now a new creature in Christ. And now that old thing, that old thing that he did by causing people to be put to death could not curse him anymore. And he, what did he do? He had to shake it off his hands, right? Make his hands clean. And what did he, what happened in the next chapters? He was using his hands for the anointing, for the power of God. He was raising the dead. He was uh, healing the sick. He was using the uh, the power of God was using him as a vessel, right? But he had to dislodge those things that were preventing him. That the the curses that he that he did in the soul. Do you see the curses in the soul, the curses in your members, the things that you have dedicated to Satan, the use of Satan or sin must be sanctified before God will use it. And you must take authority over it. You must lord over it. You must take power. You must take it back. This is why the Bible says it's the saving of our soul, right? The saving of our soul. We are to, you are to possess your soul. Is that what the Bible says? Mm -hmm. You possess ye your soul. So anyways, let's keep going. My 
phone just disconnects. So anyways, anyways, we'll just keep going. Praise the Lord. So anyways, so it we have to be purified in our members so that the Holy Spirit can manifest itself in us, right? We are we are we must be made clean before the king of glory will enter us, right? For the king, we, the, he opens the door to the spirit realm, but he is never going to walk into our our tabernacles, our temples, our holy place, the holy place that should be connected to the holy place in heaven. It's never going to be united as one until we dislodge the masters of sin in our life, right? And we must do it by the anointing and through the words. This is why the words, our words must line up with scripture. Not only our words, but our deeds, right? Once God, you know, points out the sin, once you come to the knowledge of your sin, you must be purged, sanctified, and delivered from that sin, right? This is why we've got too many ministers that are that are still in sin or they fall back or they fall prey to sin because they never deal with the sins of their past, their generational curses. They never deal with the, uh, you know, the, their soul. They never come to full. They never come to this full stature in God where they can be used. They may be, be used in words. They may preach well. They may have some sense of knowledge, but they, but the Bible says that they, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power within. There's no power to change their lives. So what happens? They still fall into error, yes. but the mouth can be used at, as a uh, instrument for God, or it can be used for an instrument to Satan, but it, 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 it because the soul is still in bondage. So be, 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 the soul has to be liberated before God will step into our human vessels. Do you see? Mm -hmm. And make us his habitation. And when he makes you his habitation, then you are a vessel in operation for his use and for his good pleasure to be able to minister whom he wants you to minister to. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's that's why the church is hidden, because Satan uses things of the flesh. He uses circumstances and situations of the flesh to frustrate you. So you lose hope. You lose interest. You lose you. You, you don't. You don't want to endure. He he knows the weaknesses of the flesh, and he knows that the if he can get us in our flesh, if he can, you know, aggravate our flesh or get us in an offense, then we will then we will thwart the power of God. This is what happened with. Uh, let's go to John the Baptist. You know, this you know he was offended. Do you see what I mean? He was offended. At God, at Jesus, and and he was offended because he was in persecution. He, you know, he wasn't expecting to be thrown in prison. He wasn't expecting uh, that uh, him moving in the power of God, moving in in word and deed, moving in in the anointing was going to uh, put him into into a a dire situation, right? And what happens is uh, we God calls us to speak maybe to a, a person that is in power and they have authority here in this earth to throw you into prison, to kill the flesh. They are they have been given delegated power. Now, is it abuse of power? Yes, it's an abuse of power, but they've been getting delegated. So they have the right to do these things in the realm of the flesh. Now, are they getting away with it with God? No, they're not getting away with it with God. But God will use a person. He will use a saint and he will put them in a place where there, there's potential of death, potential of imprisonment, potential of being you know, put into harm's way so he can bring judgment on that individual. Do you see what I mean? 
because the world's going to act like the world and the world is going to assault each other. Right. But when you put a, 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 a vessel of God in in place in, in front of a magistrate or in front of a judge or in front of an authoritative figure and they and they judge unrighteously. Right. When they judge unrighteously, when they do things uh, out, it, just out of out of re- hateful for who you represent, you re- represent the God of all gods. You represent the Lord Jesus Christ, and they hate that. And so they're going to use their power. <laughs> Satan's going to use them to use that power to destroy you, right? Yeah. And this is why we see in the end days that many will be beheaded. There's nothing that God can do about it because there is, we have been given over to the God of this world to, and he has put people in position that have, uh, you know, have power in this world to destroy the people of God. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And that because we've been given the majority have been given over to sin and and to the realms of darkness and the hatred of men is it has increased and drawn cold. There's not much hope, right? They're they are full of the fiery uh, power of the serpent, right? Mm-hmm. And they don't like your kind in their midst because you represents righteousness, you re- re- represents holiness, and so John. What working and operating, the Bible says he was full of the spirit at, at birth because, and he came in the spirit of Elijah. And what did Elijah do? He he came against uh, Jezebel and Ahab, right? Abraham and Jezebel. And he, and he was the prophet that, uh, that went before, that represented God against the, uh, the administration that was in ruling, right? Right. And so, but he, they had the power. Jezebel had the power to kill the prophets of God, and he, she did. Those who did not side, and and those who ate at Jezebel's tables, they compromised for their own life. For they, they did, you know, f- for, because of the fear of death, they compromised and they ate at Jezebel's table. So, anyways. Uh, and so they and so and so they they were compromised. And when you compromise, and when you get outside of God to save your own soul, then the God will leave you. You are no longer an, a vessel for Him. You have to endure till the end. You've got to persevere even in in the face of adversity and death. So this is why God says those who draw back. Souls draw back. I have no pleasure with them, right? Because he, if he puts you on an assignment to do his will, to bring judgment to the leaders of the nations or the leaders that are are that are binding the people, the 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 the, the uh, common person, right? Those that don't have power, those who are enslaved to the and magistrates, you know, and the ruling elites and the ruling uh, vessels that are in place that are supposed to be judging right, righteously and righteous, but they are full of darkness, right? Mm-hmm. God will put a man forth to, to bring condemnation, but then they will turn again and retaliate. And so this is exactly what happened to uh, uh, John the Baptist, and it says in Matthew 11, it says in 1 and 8, it says, it says, and it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in the cities. Now, when John had heard in the, in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John all these things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, because he's working in the power of the anointing, right? 
The lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the poor are are uh, have the gospel preached to them and and blessed is he who whomsoever shall not be offended in me right offended in me because offense is a barrier is a sin barrier unforgiveness is a sin barrier that the holy spirit cannot work effectively he cannot work in the human vessel in the temple he can work around you he can work. This is why now we have gathering places, work seeking for the move of God or the presence of God to fall upon them because there's too many people that have sin that are still resides in their temples. So God moves, what he do? He moves within the midst, right? The Bible says, if two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. He gathers in the midst. But that, but it's, but it's a limit, you know, it's limited. You might feel a touch. You might feel anointing. You might get some liberation, but there's not, this is why people go back unchanged. They go back, un, uh, you know, uh, you know, completely made whole, right? Because it takes power. It takes power and God can only move in in demonstrated power only through human tabernacles. Just feeling his presence is not getting God inside of you. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah and you, you can feel his presence all day long and still be bound in sin. You can feel and you can speak in tongues. This is why people are laboring in prayer, right? They're laboring, in prayer, feeling, they feel God's presence. They feel the, but they, but they, but inwardly they're dead men's bones, right? Inwardly, there's no transformation. They're still bound up in sin. They still have bondages because, because the Holy Spirit has not made its way inside of you to break the soul bondages, right? This is why, and he, what does Satan do? He keeps you in the realm of offense so that the, so that barrier, that sin barrier, God can't penetrate. He can't pass through. So you will not completely be free. You may have a form of godliness. You might feel his presence. You may, he may come in your midst, but it's not like.